Hi, I'm Ems, aka on Zach and Wings. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint Lamenta Space Marine Stern Guards, but this colour scheme could be used on other Lamentas as well. This is a super interesting chapter. They've been around since the Rogue Trader days, and I'll put a link in the description below so you can learn more about the law. Firstly, I prime the model over grey plastic with this sunset yellow from Colorforge. This colour is amazing and covers very well. It's basically Avalon Sunset from Games Workshop. It's very similar colour to that. I will pop a link in the description below if you'd like to purchase this paint. If you don't want to get that rattle cam, it's fine. Prime the model in white paint and then get a base coverage of Avalon Sunset. I know some people like to use pink first and then put the Avalon Sunset over the top. That's perfectly fine. It's up to you. So for the first layer over the top of this, I'm mixing Imperial Fist Yellow, which is a contrast paint, and Uriel Yellow from Citadel. You could just use Uriel Yellow on its own if you want to. That's perfectly fine, but I just like that mixture. And you could dry brush this on if you wanted to, if you want to be a bit quicker. If you don't know what dry brushing is, there are a lot of videos about it out there, and I have one myself about making a cheap, effective dry brushing kit. So I'm not dry brushing this on because I want a much smoother coverage. So I've put this onto my wet palette, that mixture. If you don't know what a wet palette is, uh, there's lots of videos out there and I have one myself. I'll link that in the description below. So I've just put a little bit of water in with this and I'm going all over the armor panels. And you can see this is a lovely coverage. There's no splotches really. It's very smooth. If you're adding this layer this way and not dry brushing, you'll probably want about two to three layers of this to get a nice, neat coverage. You could just put this colour straight over a white primer, however, you don't get as good a coverage, I find, unless you put the Avalon Sunset down first, or a similar colour. Because yellow is very transparent, and you need to build up your layers for it to look smooth. So here is the paint dried. So if you want some additional help uh, being neat with yellow once we start to add other colours, a matte varnish can help out with that. It will create a layer in between the yellow paint and anything that goes on top. So it will be easier to remove mistakes, but I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. So I'm adding my first lot of shadows here, and I'm using Skag Brown from Citadel. So this colour is an orangey brown. I didn't want to just use pure orange, I think this colour looks a lot nicer. So I'm adding this to my wet palette and I'm going to be thinning it down. I want it like the consistency of milk. And I'm going to wipe away the excess onto the back of my nail. So I have more control that way. And then I'm going over the recesses. So usually where the armor panels meet, where there's some sort of gap or line. If you wanted to be quicker about this, you could just wash it all over the model and not be as precise and then neaten it up afterwards. So here I am showing you what to do if you make a mistake. One of the easiest ways is to just get some water on your brush or a separate brush and wipe it away and you can dab it away with your finger as well. Another way is to use a thinning spirit so if the mistake's a lot harder to remove. This is the sort of stuff you use to thin oil paints and enamels and you can decanter it into some sort of container and can get a cotton swab or an old brush and then you can put it on the area which you've made the mistake on and it should rub it away. This works a lot better if you put down a layer of matte varnish first and let it dry. As I said before that matte varnish acts as a buffer zone and makes it easy to remove stains. You can simply correct your mistakes by adding your previous paint and covering it up. It looks alright over the skag brown, it covers it quite well. But if you're trying to cover mistakes like over black paint or something else that's a dark colour, it's going to be quite a lot harder. So like I said before, water or that thinning spirit would be easier in those cases. So I'm going to add some darker shadows in the recesses now. I'm using Doomble Brown for this. So this brown is going in the deepest of the recesses. So I thinned it down a little bit, but not as thin as the Skag Brown. 
So, I'm covering less areas than the Skag Brian. And I'm just getting the deepest lines, mainly where the panels meet. Again, if you make some mistakes, quickly wipe it away with water. Or use your thinning spirits. Honestly, you don't have to do this for every single panel if you don't want to. It can be very time consuming and tedious, but if you want to, that's fair enough. So I'm adding my first highlights here. Now I'm mixing Dawn Yellow with Uriel Yellow. It's much better to build up your highlights gradually because if I just added the Dawn Yellow as my highlight, it wouldn't look as good. This is going to be in a 50-50 mix and I'm hitting the panels with this, lining them. Your first highlights should always be a bit chunkier and cover more areas. That will leave you room to add a higher highlight afterwards and it'll create more contrast than push your lighter highlights as well. You don't have to highlight every single panel, just pick a few if you want to. So I'm going to go in with my final highlight here, and this is just pure Dawn Yellow. So like with the previous paint, I've thinned this down a little bit, and you can wipe the excess away on your nail or elsewhere. And you want to have maximum control, so if your paint's thicker and there's less of it, you'll get more control than if it's watery and you have a lot of it. Which is what we want with edge highlights, we want as much control as possible. I'm not saying to use the paint straight out of the pot, we don't want that thickness, we want a little bit of water with it so it smooth flows well and isn't chalky or crunchy. So the more highlights you add, as I always say, the less areas that you want to cover, so we're just adding these over the top of the previous ones, but making sure to still show the previous layers underneath. Also the Dawn Yellow will stand out more if you gradually build it up in layers. Whereas if you just put this over the top of the base colour, it wouldn't look as good. It would look more faded and washed out. I know I haven't shaded and highlighted the entirety of the model, but I just wanted to show you an example of how it works. So let's move on to the next Dodgy task after painting yellow, which is painting the shoulder pads and emblems of the Lamenters. But if you don't feel like freehanding these, there are a lot of 3D prints out there. I will link these in the description below, or you can also buy them. There's this company called Pop Goes the Monkey, who, who do a lot of different parts for Lamenters and other armies. But if you do want to be a sadist and do some free hands, the best thing I can suggest is mapping it out first with a mechanical pencil. So I map out the checkered pattern first. Then after that's done, I roughly draw a circle into the center. And you want to grab a small brush with a fine point and then start to add the checks. So I usually do the black first and then the white, but you can do it any way in which you want. So after I've done the checkered part, I add the white into the middle. This might take a few layers. Then I add a black line around the center of this. So after it's all been neatened up and I'm happy with it, I go in with some Mephist on red. I'm going to do the heart symbol. You could sketch and draw it out first if you want to, but I'm just going to freehand this on with paint. If you're feeling a bit more adventurous, you don't just have to do these on the shoulder pads, you can do some more on the model. So this is an example of one I've done previously. 
So as you can see, some examples of some other ways to do the check patterns. And these were all done freehand. So that's it for part one of painting these Lamenta Sternguard Space Marines. In the next part, I'll be showing you how to paint the weapons, the purity seals, and so on. Remember to enjoy your hobbies for yourself, respect the people who enjoy them in their own ways, and at the end of the day, they're just war dollies. I'll see you in the next one.